resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Well, hello, my Next Level friends. Welcome to the Artist Next Level podcast. I am very happy to be here with you once again. Thank you so much for being here. I also want to say thank you for those of you who have been sending me messages through social media about the latest podcast episodes. Thank you so much. It really means the world to me. My friend, if you haven't done so yet, if you haven't given a review to this podcast, please do so. Do it in iTunes. It really helps to get this podcast to a lot more artists. Well, today I have an awesome interview to share with you. I'm going to be chatting with Cheryl Weiner. Cheryl and her husband are both artists, and their daughter is also an artist. And this is kind of a pretty cool story of a family of artists. You know, I have heard a lot of, you know, maybe the, the husband and wife being an artist, but husband, wife, and daughter, you know, all being devoted artists. That, that was a fascinating story. I invited Cheryl to come to the show and kind of share how they met, you know, how they all became artists. And it's been pretty cool. I think you will love it. Let me tell you a little bit about each of them in the family. So Cheryl Weiner is both a passionate artist and vocalist who has devoted much of her creative energy towards a greater self-awareness and spiritualism that is often depicted in her paintings and drawings. An ardent planner, painter, and figurative artist, her work is widely displayed in both public and private collections. She's a graduate of Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. She's a member of American Impressionist Society, the Birmingham Bloomingfield Art Center, and Detroit Society of Women Painters and Sculptors. Her husband, Timothy, Timothy Weiner, is a recognized artist and teacher who has shown his work worldwide. The recipient of many awards, including the Award of Excellence, through the Society of Animal Artists, as well as the National Society of Portrait Painters. His work is housed in many collections, both public and private. He holds a graduate degree in the history of art from Michigan State University. And their daughter, Rachel, Rachel Glosky, is currently attending the School of the Art Institute of Chicago as a fine art student. She is now in her fourth year in the painting and drawing program and will graduate in 2020 with her BFA. Her main focus is in oil painting and works on paper with an interest in writing and philosophy. And my friends, I'm so happy to share with you my conversation with Cheryl Weiner. Hello, Cheryl. How are you today? Hi, I am wonderful. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you so much for being here on behalf of the whole family. So we're going <laughs> to have a great conversation. Are you ready to take us to the next level? I am absolutely ready to, to zoom all the way up there. Yep. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. I love it. Well, Cheryl, you know, you and I, we started chatting actually over Facebook. And that's why I love social media because, you know, it's such a great opportunity to connect with people, with artists uh, and other people, you know, in the art industry from around the world that uh, sometimes have fascinating stories that we just happen to cross paths uh, through social media. And that's kind of like the story between both of us, right, as uh, we connected through uh, Facebook specifically. And right. then I think it was a comment on a post or something. And then you talk about you know, your husband being an artist and your daughter being an artist. And then I got really, really uh, fascinated for that about that story. And I asked you to tell me a little bit more about that. And I said, well, now, why don't we share it with everybody in the podcast? I think, uh, you know, it is, it is really exciting. You know, it's, it's rare to find an artist couple and but then find an artist couple plus also a daughter who is also an artist it's even more rare right. so um it doesn't always work the <laughs> the best but you guys have made it work and that's why we want to have a great conversation about that how does that sound it sounds awesome and and we have made it worked it is working for us so we're we've we're, we actually are having starting to have a lot of fun with it mm. So why don't we start, let's go back in the story. Let's start a little bit about you. You know, how did you, uh, you know, get interested first in art? And tell us a little bit also about the type of art that you do. Oh, my. Um, so my, my beginnings with art, like so many people who are probably already following you, began as a child. And I was that perpetual daydreamer out the window, um, mm -hmm. constructing vignettes in my mind and 
doodling in the sky with you know my imagination and all kinds of things so actually all my report cards from elementary school had the, the idea the comment of daydreams too much <laughs> right no which i think yeah so many of us can relate to as you know observers mm -hmm. um so my family did not support it uh, they didn't support my artistic uh, needs at all. I actually had a, a two-week scholarship offered to me the summer between fifth and sixth grade for violin mm -hmm. at Interlaken, which is up here in Michigan. Okay. And my mother tore it up. Oh, no. so, mm -hmm. so from a very early age, I knew that I had to start keeping my desires secret. So mm -hmm. I started drawing on the wall between, you know, like I'd pull the bed out and I would draw on the wall thinking they'd right. never find it. So, you know, fast forward, um, you know, I never had any support. So mm -hmm. I just always thought there was something missing and something wrong. And I would kind of always come back to it. So in high school, I did for a while. Um, there was, you know, like, like, again, so many of us, the idea of like, well, what are you going to do to make a living? You can't make a living in art. Mm -hmm. So I've always had this thing going, you know, toggling back and forth between doing work that was like, quote, unquote, a career, but still always painting and always being connected to some portion of the art community. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't until, uh, I was, I was married. I'm fast forwarding like all the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so in my early days I did a lot of, um, I called it just pushing color around okay. and I would work on these very large canvases and, you know, just very primitive, you know, just like, mm -hmm. you know, like shoving the paint around and grabbing yeah. colors. And it was always about color and movement for me mm -hmm. and um, and then I worked on my drawing here and there and um, never in any real disciplined way and so in fits and spurts okay. and uh, I did not have any formal training even when I decided to go to college everyone thought you know like well you're an artist you're, you're gonna take art right and I'm like right, mm, right. no you know <laughs> I have to prove I have to prove myself academically mm -hmm. so I did that I got a, a a degree in liberal fine arts with a major in psych. Okay. And uh, doodled my way through and painted my way through and constantly always like resisting and coming back. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until uh, now I'm really going to fast forward back to where I almost jumped to before. Okay. Um, I got married right when I was thinking about doing a master's PhD program. Mm -hmm. in ed psych which i was accepted to as top candidate mm. and then my marriage uh my original marriage came crashing down mm -hmm. and at that time both of my parents were sick and dying mm. um my daughter was in first grade my son was in third grade and i had no help mm -hmm. and i had no real source of income so i jumped back into um what had been become my main way of making a living which was as a hairdresser okay and i i had become extremely proficient and was known mm -hmm. nationwide and some other areas for the color work i did so mm. i managed to find you know like to still keep in touch with my artistic needs right. but applying it to hair interesting mm -hmm. right so um lots of little extra stories I could tell there that are just interesting and kind of baubles. But uh, it was during this time when my life was crashing down. Mm -hmm. My father had just died. I, I bought the home that my new husband, Tim, mm -hmm. and I live in at that time. And I decided, somebody saw something I did and she said, you should come into my class. Mm -hmm. And her class was in a very popular kind of prestigious art center near me called okay. Birmingham Bloomfield Art Center, BBAC. Mm -hmm. And I, I dropped into her class, showed the instructor um, a couple pieces I had done in pastels mm -hmm. while I was in the throes of divorce. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, you're definitely good enough to come into my class. Okay. And so I started, I was like, 
nobody compared to all these other people. They had been, you know, studying with him. His name was Robert Wilbert, and mm -hmm. they became my first, like, serious painting family okay. where I realized, you know, this is truly my tribe. Yeah. Like nothing else I've ever known. You, you felt really embraced by the group. Oh, totally. Mm. Um, yeah, Robert was in uh, the the final years of his teaching, mm -hmm. and he he had macular degeneration happening, and he he had slowed down quite a bit as t as as an instructor in the classroom. Yes, but his his support and his friendship and his body of work, you know, was something that I could connect to, and the class. Mm -hmm. Right. was amazing some very yeah. well established artists in there and they kind of adopted me okay. and they all started showing me how to do this and how to do that right so i had um i set up a hair studio in my home i have a beautiful lower level uh -huh. um and i i would have my wet canvas sitting there on an easel right near my workstation for doing hair yeah. And one day my mother who, you know, was was ill and not doing so great, she saw this painting and she, you know, found out I was taking classes and she just did a snarky bark about, you know, like, well, you can't afford that. You don't have the resources, you don't have the time, you don't mm -hmm. have the money. And something inside me just like went real solid and I looked at her and I said, I can't afford not to. Mhm. Mm and that was a really significant turning point in my life. Mm. All right. yeah. I, can, I can totally imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and then somewhere in all of that, um, mm -hmm. as a single woman dating mm -hmm. and having several relationships that just, you know, like, oh, there's just something missing, something missing. Yeah. I had this brilliant idea that, I was going to need to find like a man who was an artist or somebody who was a, a supporter of the fine arts. Hmm, okay. um, I, so you I actually never... thought about that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> my 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 ex husband um, uh -huh. did was attracted to me originally when we first were dating, first yeah. getting to know each other. Loved the 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 creative side of me loved the intellectual side of me yeah yeah loved that i can walk into a room and socialize with for the most part a, a mm -hmm. decent amount of ease and he was not that i mean mm. he was he was a doctor he was you know is a doctor doing lots of other things yeah so the thing that he was most attracted to me in the beginning became very sharp points of adversarial commentary mm -hmm. from him right right um and ultimately he he you know yeah. he he did not support it i'll just let it suffice to that <laughs> right 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 so i had it in my head i would have to find somebody who you know really embraced that part of me mm -hmm. and that it was already a part of their life as well great yeah. so tell, so tell us about how you you know how do you guys meet then <laughs> okay, <laughs> the perfect segue. <laughs> so, um, my beloved instructor, mm -hmm. Robert, retired. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right at the same time, my mother passed away. Oh, okay. And my father had passed away. So, I had this terrible sense of loss. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not careful, I'll start crying as I tell you the story. Mm -hmm. Um but it was very, very powerful. Like I said, the, that class had become my family. And those people right. had been painting with Robert for some of them 20, 15 and 20 years. Wow. So, right. So the class kind of scattered. Everybody was at a, at a loss. And the art center hired in this new, new guy to take the Tuesday 9 to 3 spot. Mm -hmm. And I gave him a try. Okay. And he was arrogant. <laughs> okay. and I could not stand him <laughs> and although the class started at nine at two o'clock in the afternoon he made his way over to me and he promptly took my palette knife out of my hand uh -huh. scraped my entire painting down 
to the canvas, mm -hmm. like scraped it off, off, <laughs> oh my and said, here, let me show you how it's done. Uh -huh. And whippity whappity boom 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 in 10 minutes, <laughs> whipped out this little still life. Uh -huh. That was gorgeous, but I was, I was fuming at how I had <laughs> I just been imagine. treated. <laughs> Wow. And there were a couple of people in the class who knew me as an okay painter. I mean, I uh -huh. wasn't great. I was just an okay painter at that time. Yeah, yeah. And their mouths dropped open. <laughs> I can imagine if people in the room. <laughs> and, and he had also like scraped off all my paint off of the palette and laid off <laughs> all this new color. And I'm thinking like, I that's a lot of money that just went <laughs> down the, <laughs> into the garbage pail, you know? <laughs> and I was just waiting for this to be over. And then he said, there, you should keep that for a while so you can see how it should be done. <laughs> now he didn't quite say it in that tone of voice, but that's yeah. what my memory has done with it. Because <laughs> right, I was right. so upset. <laughs> so I, I marched into the, his supervisor's office, <laughs> sputtering my rage. Uh -huh. And she just sat there nodding her head like all she can do. And she was like, oh, my God, that's terrible. Would you like your money back? And I was, <laughs> and I was like, well, since I've been a recipient of scholarship here every so often, no, he can keep it, but I'm never taking his class again. again uh -huh. And then um, I took someone else's class. And, you know, it's like she was a very good teacher and a, and, and a very nice artist. And I learned some wonderful things from her. Mm -hmm. um i especially like i had a goal she was like a color maniac so mm -hmm. i really wanted to learn like how to control color on my palette so yeah. i would have a beautiful palette at the end of a painting session okay so i i learned that in her class and i actually felt like so incredibly proud of myself and surprise of surprise my paintings started looking better <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so um I was in line for registration and a very dear friend came up to me and she said, you know, I've been taking Tim's class uh -huh. and, and he, he, he's a little less arrogant than he was when he started, <laughs> but he's, he's the best teacher I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm glad that's working out for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because he's not scraping your paintings right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So, so, um, then about a year and a half after that fateful day when I stormed out of his class, <laughs> a very dear friend of mine, someone who had been a mentor of mine my entire life, she was one of my mother's dearest friends, and uh -huh. she was part of my life forever. They were friends okay. from the time they were girls. Okay. And um, I used to say, I, I feel like I have two moms, and she's the one who likes me. Mm-hmm. And she's an artist. So she, you know, it's like, I, you know, she, she really saw me through, you know, all, all kinds of stuff in my Everything. life. Yeah. And she was always a constant. So, um, and she had been the one in Robert's class who said, you know, come, come, come in class, you know, it would be mm -hmm. a good experience for you. Right. So here it was, it was like, you know, a couple of years after, after, you know, that had all fallen apart. And I get this phone call from her. She says, well, you know, I hear he's, he's really like not as arrogant and that Lisa says he's the best teacher she's ever had. Mm -hmm. And I want to paint with Lisa again. And I miss painting with you. Will you sign up for the class with me? Mm -hmm. And at that point in my life, I was like desperately lonely. So mm -hmm. I was like, Yes, I will. Okay. I okay. I will wear I will I will wear my earbuds and listen to my music in the classroom if I must. But yes, I will come in there and I will paint with you. Uh huh. So I walked into the classroom with her with a sense of aha, I'm back where I belong. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was like so thrilled to see people, you know, a few people who I'd missed, mm -hmm. and to be there with her, with with this dear friend. Right. And he, he saw me, Tim was in the classroom and he saw me as if it was the first time. And um, he, one thing, you know, led to another. In the classroom, I never talked anything about my personal life. Okay. So he, he thought I was, you know, involved with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, he never talked about his personal life. There were others who knew he was married and saw him, you know, at workshops and whatever 
other right. events with his wife. So they were always talking about what a wonderful marriage he had with his wife. Mm -hmm. And he never refuted it. So I thought he's happily married. Yeah, yeah. So I was in his class for, you know, a couple of years. And then I start seeing these qualities in him as mm -hmm. he softened and as he got used to being in the class and he didn't have to prove himself. Mm -hmm. And I saw all these really wonderful qualities and I started thinking, wow, if I could just meet someone like Tim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And one day at lunch, I mentioned, you know, if anybody knows anybody, you know, available for dating, I'm asking. Uh -huh. And his head turned, spun around on him. <laughs> in a way I'll never forget. It's uh -huh. like, it was just like, I was right? like, I was, yeah. right. I was like really confused. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know, shortly after that, he had a day where he was very agitated and he kept leaving the classroom and I mm -hmm. thought like, something's not right. I hope he's okay. Right. And I mean, I really hope he's okay. Like this is not like him. Mm -hmm. And he's very professional in the classroom. And uh, I, I had grown fond of him as a person and as an artist, so I, I was concerned. And when class was over and it was time to leave, I walked past him. And he was sitting with the program director right. and um, looked at him and said, yeah, I hope you're okay. And he said, I wish I could tell you, you of all people, I wish I could tell you. Mm. And I walk out to my car and I'm thinking like, what's he talking about? Yeah. <laughs> And he came out there and I looked at him and I said, you look like you could use a hug. And he grabbed on like he'd never let go. Hmm. And um, he called me that night and uh, we started talking. We met for um, dinner or late lunch, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And he started to tell me how he was in the process of divorce and that that mm -hmm. day he had gotten this horrible phone call mm -hmm. and found out, you know, stuff that you find out when you're going through that. Yeah. And um and he in that first date shared his interest with me. Of, uh -huh. uh, his interest of me with mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and asked if it was mutual and I said I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking for Latinos <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the I said, you know, you have to you have to make it through your divorce first. I can yeah. help you through that and then we'll see what there is to, you know, what to happened? Mm -hmm. unfold yeah mm -hmm. so it wasn't all smooth it was rocky and mm -hmm. uh finally his life settled down and um eventually uh things were smooth and working pretty well and he moved in with me and my daughter was in rachel was in her senior year of high school at the okay. time so he became a, a very important person not just in my life but in her life at a time mm -hmm. where she mm -hmm. wasn't sure you know, what direction her life was going to go. Right. So I, as, as her mother, you know, having seen, you know, it's like she has this, she didn't really pursue art in high school. There was not a good art instructor. Mm -hmm. I had her take some lessons at the art center right. after school um, as a way of helping her out. Mm -hmm. And my son, her brother, is incredibly academically gifted. Okay. So she was trying to keep up with Jacob, okay. which isn't doable. <laughs> <laughs> she had the artist spirit within. Yeah. So, um, so anyhow, so she did extremely well in school as well. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't in, until uh, towards the end of her senior year that it became obvious that she really needed to go into the arts. Yeah, right. I was a little panicky because I thought, how can I help her figure out that which I have not yet mm -hmm. for myself? Mm -hmm. So Tim kind of stepped in as a mentor to her at mm -hmm. a really critical time in mm -hmm. her life. Yeah. Right. That's, you know, that's a, that's a great story. I love it. I, you know, um, as you have taken us uh, through the narrative of you know, <laughs> your upbringing and then uh, meeting team. And then, uh, you know, through your daughter, through as well, kind of following in those footsteps. So it brings us to a really interesting point, right? Where Which is kind of like the present, right? Where we're at now. And you're an artist uh, trying to figure, continue to figure out your own career. Because I think that never ends, right? As artists, thing is an ongoing progression. We evolve, we mature, and, uh, you know, our interests sometimes shift. And, and uh, it's a, always a learning process. And, the, you know, not to 
also mentioned that the world changes at the same time, right? In <laughs> right, its own, right. In its own direction, yeah. right? Uh, like it's not complicated already, right? So, yeah, <laughs> exactly. The world changes and makes it even you know, like, oh, look, there's that. <laughs> yeah, it pushes us to learn new things and so on. So tell me a little bit, let's talk a little bit about also some of the fun facts of, uh, you know, how those uh, a day look like for you and Tim? You know, do you have like studio together? Do you have your own <laughs> studio? Is, are they in the house, outside the house. Tell us a little bit of some of those uh, kind of uh, uh, interesting okay. points of, of, of the actual so, everyday life, you know? Right. It, it's, it's compact. Um, mm-hmm. So the, the home that I bought post-divorce uh, mm-hmm. for myself and my kids is a cozy little home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, there's a walkout lower level. Um, there was a, a, a garden out, out, past the window now there's a really beautiful garden we garden together okay and um we have uh i still do a little bit of hair down there and um we share that space it's a a a long enough space Mm -hmm. so he has his easel and his setup on one side i have mine on the other side Um, There are times where we're both backing up at the same time and we literally will like bump into each other. Um, There are times where we, we both like the same kind of music for the most part. Okay. So, so that helps. That helps, right? Yeah, that helps, I assume. (laughs) Right. That's a really important thing, you know, to how do you fill the space? What environment do you, do we create? And it was really important to me when he moved in that he be able to make a, a studio space for himself mm-hmm. um, because, you know, that's how he makes his living, painting right. and teaching. So he's, he's got to be at home here, right. you know. So, uh, and I had been living here uh, for nearly 10 years by myself with my kids. Mm-hmm. So it was quite an interesting thing. It was, it, was a, it was something we both really worked hard to make happen, me to give up some of my space and him to adopt it and adapt into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've changed the lighting significantly a couple times actually, because lighting is so complicated, especially yeah. with a giant door wall. <laughs> um, it, it has a Eastern exposure. Okay. So in the morning it's too bright. And then if it's a sunny afternoon, when that sun hits the corner and it disappears from the room, it feels like we're in a black hole. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's, you know, those actual logistics storage is a, <laughs> yeah. um, is a very interesting thing. Um, so we've started uh, any canvases that are just in storage racks. We've, we okay. sort through them uh, at least once a year okay. and um, cut them off the stretcher bars and mount them on panel if we want to keep them or just store them in a drawer if, if we're not sure or mm-hmm. slice them up and throw them out because the neighbors have sometimes come through our garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. now, that's interesting. Now, let's also talk about uh, some of the, you know, not only, you know, he's an artist and you're an artist, but also kind of like everybody or, or each one of you, I should say, each one of you running your own career, but also at some point deciding to kind of team up in the business of art, uh, which is something I'm really interested in. For example, your website, right? Your website is Tim and Cheryl, right? Weiner Fine we, Art. So Right, right. We, we decided... Tell me about that decision. How, you know, how did that happen? Um, I was a little intimidated because mm-hmm. his, his work is far more refined than mine. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting. He has a very classical background. I have mm-hmm. a very feral background. Mm-hmm. So my, my thing is like taming myself and then integrating more mm-hmm. intuitive work into something that has, you know, a little bit more foundations to it. Yeah. Because I was miss- missing a lot of those foundations. Mm-hmm. And then he never really had anybody pushing him to be, uh, to be looser, okay. to, to explore color more. So, mm-hmm. um, so, so when you go on the site, you can see that there's a huge difference between our, my work and right. his work. Um, and I'm looking stylist- at it right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, stylistically wise. Um, and then my daughter is not on there. We talked about that, um, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, she's got her own path to evolve right. right now with that. And this year's really a magical year for her. Things are starting mm-hmm. to click. She's starting to understand 
certain mm-hmm. things inside her, what her motivation is, and it's really mm-hmm. exciting. Great. Um, so yeah, so um, my my second full time job is running and building Widener Fine Art. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the focus is more on him, and. Mm-hmm. Up until recently, I really did defer to putting the top focus all on him. Mm -hmm. And as I build my body of work in a way that I believe in more and my skill Mm -hmm. is is getting better, my vision is also getting better, and this Mm -hmm. is serious for me now as well. Mm -hmm. So there are certain aspects of my work I've mastered. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel less intimidated sharing that site with him as Widener Mm -hmm. Fine Art. Yes. Um, yeah, we co-authored a book together. Wonderful. Which and I see here. Mm-hmm. It, it's primarily his work, and it's mm-hmm. me interviewing him and um, mm-hmm. adding some funny stories in there about our conversations that we have. <laughs> okay. Um, I- including one specific plein air day that we did when it was ninety-eight degrees at two o'clock mm-hmm. afternoon sun, standing in, in this mammoth lawn in front of this huge gothic style church in our area mm-hmm. and uh, comments that were made when we finally got into the air conditioned car <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. without the bugs and the bees uh-huh. and the dragonflies bothering, you know, and, and, and the sprinkler system coming on and yeah. all those crazy things. So, so there's a lot of joy, you know, uh, you know, we, right. we share our frustrations together. My daughter was with us on that plein air okay. trip. Very cool. um, yeah. And she, 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 claims she hates plein air, but she sees mm-hmm. the value of slogging yeah. it through in the hot summer months. She right. sees and the results in her studio work her later work. on. That's mm-hmm. great. Now, what's the name of the book? Is, and where can our friends find it? Oh, we, 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 listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we self-published, and right now okay. a limited series of it is only available mm-hmm. through us, and that could be uh, people, if someone is interested, they can reach out through our website. And can you please, uh, since we're talking about that, can you please share your website link? Yes, it is widenerfineart.com. Mm-hmm. And I think is you know, I, I love the I love the story. I love what you guys are doing together, and you know, it really complements uh, you know each other's work. And I think that's wonderful. Where when you come here, you can distinguish which one is your work, which one is Tim's work. And I think that's great. And, you know, by, you know, just coming to a site where somebody maybe is coming looking for you, now they will also discover your husband and vice versa. Somebody might be coming, looking, Googling your husband and it finds you. So I think, you know, that's, that's a great way also to combine forces versus each one trying to build your own audience, but kind of say, hey, you know, uh, we're in this together. Uh, we do. We all have our own vision, our own path, and or or you know our own values. What we want to do as artists, but in the business aspect, you know, why not working together? Uh, and I, I just find that fascinating. I think that's awesome. I'm really happy that you guys are doing that. Thank and you. Uh, you know, I think that's a choice that uh, that makes sense in your case because not always makes sense, you know. But I think in your case, both of you, I think it makes total sense, and I think it works really well together. And that's the at the end, that's the narrative that you're putting. Um, you know, about, uh, you know, this partnership between the two of you. Yes. And, and you know, and we, and we do work at it. There's times where mm-hmm. he, his ego is a little flustered and there's times where mine is a little flustered yeah. and we have, we, we have to um, be able to clear the air mm-hmm. and, you know, like it's, it's a wonderful way to really challenge ourselves and grow. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, and then my poor daughter, you know, I barely mentioned her. It's like, um, not this past summer, the summer before she came home from being there in Chicago. She's, as I said, in her senior Mm -hmm. year at Mm -hmm. School of Art Institute Chicago. And she's focusing on painting and drawing as her, as her main theme. Mm -hmm. And let not this past summer, the summer before she came home and, you know, uh, she had gotten used to the pace of Chicago, and we live in the suburbs. It's a little sleepy. Yeah. And um, she went into a slump, and she was like, I, just, I think I'm never going to paint again. Um, mm. I don't know who I'm painting for. I don't know if I'm painting for you, Mom. I don't know if I'm painting for Tim. I don't know if I'm mm-hmm. painting for myself. I think I'm never right. going to paint again. And then she right. took that. she took that with her. Um, and then she f- finished out the summer painting like a maniac and saying, I don't know what my problem was. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. So her studio space is, is upstairs in her bedroom. Okay. So, right. 
didn't mention that. Um, and the whole house is used as, as gallery space and Wonderful. storage space and, and, and crazy. That's but um, yeah, so when she went back to school last year, um, friends who, of hers who she sh- shares studio space with at the school, mm-hmm. they all were like, what are you talking about? You're not sure if you're a painter. If anyone I've ever known is a painter, it is you. <laughs> <laughs> that it does. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure there are so many fabulous stories and we know oh, we're, yeah. we're getting like really close to uh, end our talk. Uh, but before we do that, before we start wrapping it up, um, you, all of you had a show together, right? Had an opportunity to exhibit together recently. Is that correct? Yes, we did. Because that's kind of how I remember I, you know, we got in touch through Facebook because, you know, you mentioned and you had posted about it and that really got me intrigued about your story. So tell, tell me a little bit about, you know, just in a few uh, uh, sentences, you know, that, that feeling of uh, sharing walls, sharing space with your husband and with your daughter. Oh, my gosh. Um we were all over the place um, emotionally in the beginning of it. Um, the the show had come been offered to me, mm-hmm. and right you know it's like the, this small gallery near mm-hmm. in our area. Um, they like to have three artists, and I said, "Well, I'd like to have my husband and my daughter." And her eyes like mm-hmm. popped open, and she's like, "Wonderful!" <laughs> so and uh-huh. and because he's done more shows, you know, yeah. I a little bit. Rachel and I said, well, we have to be careful to make sure we defend our space without offending his space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we, we had a couple of powwows about that and dove right into, all right, what's our theme going to be? How are we going to do this? Our work is so different. How are we going to mm-hmm. make a good show of it? Mm-hmm. And it fell together really easily. Mm-hmm. And because I think when there's open minds and open hearts, anybody can make any connection for any any show. Right. And um, I was so excited to see, you know, mm-hmm. Tim helped me tremendously. Mm-hmm. I, I'd still be matting and framing and prepping work to this day, I think, if he hadn't dove in. And um, so he helped me tremendously with that. And he helped Rachel as well, and, and she helped. And we all curated together. We, we, mm-hmm. we hung a really beautiful show the uh, cu- the curator at the gallery said that it's actually the most beautiful show she's ever had there Wonderful. and went from having a full calendar mm-hmm. uh, for the next two years to inviting us back this this February to do a plein air show oh, wow. um, mm-hmm. so um, yeah I was thrilled and for Rachel it's like she she had some really wonderful works um, mm-hmm. she's She's not tall. Um, she's maybe 5'3 on a tall day. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she likes working big. So she didn't have as many pieces. But boy, yeah. oh boy, um, it packed a wall up. And it was such a joy to see her, right? Um, you know, just kind of taking in how people were responding to her work. Okay, and then she was excited for mm-hmm. me that way too. And anyhow, it just, it just yeah. wow, we were like, just like, scrape us off the ceiling so proud of each other and ourselves mm-hmm. it's very cool it's, it's definitely got to be a first not a not not an anomaly exactly so, mm-hmm. well that's amazing thank you so much for sharing you know your story and you know the behind the scenes those moments you know those conversations i think you know that's kind of what makes a, a, a story so unique right is when we are willing to share those moments and that you know i want to say Thank you so much for doing that for us here, for everybody at the Artist Next Level podcast. We appreciate you. Now I feel like I know Tim a little bit better now because of this conversation <laughs> as I see his work, uh, as well as Rachel, your daughter, which I hope uh, to meet here in Chicago soon as well. And um, hopefully, you know, maybe one day we can all meet together, right? All, all three of you we're, uh, take a trip to Chicago or I'll go your way. One of the two. <laughs> we're we're, we're going we're gonna to be in Chicago uh, for November 15th. She has her BFA show. Very good. So, so um, we'll, we'll I, I will touch. send you details of you know, where we are and when and all that. So, yeah. Abs- absolutely. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much. Now, before we wrap it up, can you please tell our friends, because I'm sure now there's a lot of curiosity, a lot of our friends are like, okay, where can we find uh, <laughs> Cheryl and Tim and Rachel? So, can you share with our friends your website and also Instagram accounts where we can find you all? Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you for this. Um, mm-hmm. 
And I'll throw in tomorrow's my birthday. So this is a wonderful birthday gift. Awesome. Well, happy birthday. I'm not going <laughs> to sing you. here on the microphone. No, no, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I say goodbye. <laughs> Later. <laughs> All right. So our website is Widener. So mm-hmm. W-I-D-E-N-E-R fineart.com. Okay. And then we have, you know, I'll put it up on our website for our social media. I'll do it in a newsletter. Um, or a blog post, so it'll be easier to find because with all the un, you know underscores and things like that, it's hard. <laughs> right. So um, the the Instagram that I run for Tim mm-hmm. and myself is mm-hmm. Widener underscore Fine underscore Art. Okay. You know, with the at and mine is at Cheryl with a C, mm-hmm. initial B, Widener. Mm-hmm. Um, Rachel's is at Rachel R A C H E L. Mm-hmm. Glusky, G-L-U-S-K-I. Very good. You did really well with all those uh, <laughs> on the Instagrams. And I'm going to also include them in the show notes so if your friends want to check them out, you know, just go to the Artist Next Level podcast, look for this for this episode, and you will find Thank it you for as that. well right there, either on the Thank website you. or on iTunes or wherever you consume this podcast. Well, Cheryl, we have come to the end of our conversation. Unfortunately, we could you know, keep talking all day, but uh, <laughs> you know, our friends also have things to do, and I'm sure you have things to do as well. So I want to say thank you so much uh, for that. One last uh, piece of advice for any art family out there who may be listening in right now you know, that you would give that what has helped you to keep it all together with three artists in the house. Oh, honesty. Just pick one. <laughs> yeah, just honesty. First with yourself. Mm-hmm. And at any point, um, if it's not working, you know, just to really assess what part of that tension you individually are contributing to. Because if you ever try to point a finger at somebody else, it's never going to help. Mm-hmm. So it's always, you know, like, how can I help? I would say that's my biggest operative is like, how can I help? What else can I do? Absolutely. That's awesome. And by the way, it's great having you also guys at the uh, Small Works Art Sales Challenge, which is going to be great. We just started it. So that's uh, also really fun. We're going to have a great time. I am very excited for that. So um, I can't thank you enough for inviting me here and for creating opportunity that you are. And um, yeah, I I think, you know, what you're doing is awesome. So thank Thank you you so much. Well, thanks, Cheryl. Thank you so much. And we want to thank to all our friends who joined us today. Please do us a big favor. So Cheryl and I are, you know, will be so happy if you share this episode with a friend. So if you enjoy this conversation, click share, send it to a friend, say, hey, you have to listen to this, you know, and that will make us super excited, super happy. And thanks again. And I will see you at the next level. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.